So let's go see the USA. They'll treat you right unless you're black or gay or Cherokee. They won't. <sighs> this video is brought to you by Surfshark. Uh, excuse me, would you like to taste my smoked meat log? All right, so the last thing that I wanted to do was turn this The Art Of series into just me talking about Seth MacFarlane cartoons in succession. Even though the American Dad video doesn't exist anymore, kinda, I, I just didn't like how close together all of these were. Besides, you know, I got a couple other things on my maybe list for this series. I could just do one of those, right? You saw those? Some look really interesting, right? Now, watch me not get to them for six months. <laughs> the Art of Dog Bites Bear, the one I did on Family Guy's 300th episode was a real turning point for this channel in a lot of respects. It was when I made the conscious decision to only talk about things that I liked or enjoyed, and that video is a real reflection of that. It's also a reflection of how important it is to make sure you have a good thumbnail. In that video, the thesis was about how after years of shoving insincere characters in our face that perceivably get worse and worse, Family Guy finally stepped out of itself and earned a much more heartwarming ending. If you've been keeping up with my videos for the past few months, you notice a clear quantity boost in the amount of Family Guy references that I've been making, and that's because I can't stop watching it, son. I don't know what to do. Throughout my rewatch, I ended up catching the season three episode again, Brian Wallows and Peter Swallows, directed by Dan Pavemeyer, known for co-creating Phineas and Ferb, and Milo Murphy's Law, which later became Phineas and Ferb except with less animation. My building! Ah, I crash on your couch. Brian Wallows and Peter Swallows is the best episode of Family Guy. It's not only great for this series, but it's one of my favorite episodes of television ever. Easy top 20, top 25 material. After seeing it again and it resonating with me emotionally like it always does, I got curious and looked up a few top 10 Family Guy episodes list to see where it landed because it had to somewhere, right? Except it doesn't. Fam, y'all ever looked this up before? All these lists of fucking dog shit. Man, it ain't nothing but a bunch of stuff like McStroke or Road to the Multiverse. Like, McStroke is funny, sure, and Multiverse might be the show's most beautiful episode despite it having that obvious Disney anti-Semite joke. But as stories? As episodes of television? They've got nothing on this one, son. It's not even close. The purpose? of this video is to show Brian Wallows some well-deserved love and maybe convince people as to why I think it's such a great episode of television. To throw it in the conversation next to the other ones. Like everyone brings up Back to the Pilot because of like it's first 10 minutes and it's a great 10 minutes. Yeah, but then everyone forgets that the other half of the episode is about them fucking making 9-11 happen. Oh, there it is. We did it, Brian. We made 9-11 happen. High five. All right. High five. Hey. Well, that, that probably wouldn't look very good out of context. Holy crap, Lois. This is just like that time to Enrific Tariq was sponsored by Surfshark. It... it is? And do you even say holy crap anymore, or is it just like an I Karumba thing where you just forgot about it for ten years? Beta? <laughs> Today's video is actually brought to you by Surfshark VPN. As time goes on, we learn the importance of safety and security. It's something that we gotta deal with on a daily basis, and sometimes it isn't exactly easy to find out the right solutions. Like, for real, wouldn't it be great if there was like just one thing that could get rid of most of the issues? Most internet users aren't even aware of the amount of surveillance, limitations, and data mining done with their personal information on a daily basis. Well, Surfshark VPN can get rid of all of these problems for you with an easy to use one for all solution. Surfshark actually turns you into an anonymous and hard to trace online user and makes the internet a safer and more enjoyable place for you. With the click of a button, you can totally forget about data mining and intrusive advertisement. It even helps with geo-blocking. Like, son, Disney Plus or Netflix, for example, have different movies for each country. Did you know that? Not me. I'm broke. I can't afford none of them shits. Surfshark gives you all the access that you need. Just connect to the service and refresh the page. Access granted. You can use it every day, and it'll automatically start up whenever you turn on your PC. You can use the promo code TUNERIFIC to get 85% off, plus three extra months for free. Holy crap. Oh, look at this deal. Hey. Yeah, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna stop you right there. There's no way we're gonna do two jokes like this. Surfshark actually offers a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no real risk. And just click the link in the description for three months free and 85% off using the code TUNERIFIC. T-O-O-N-R-I-F-I-C for 85% off plus three extra months free. What is this, spit soup? Tomato bisque. What is this, snap soup? Tomato bisque. What is this, diarrhea soup? Brian Wallows and Peter Swallows is about Brian being really down on his love life, so Peter takes him to a laser show to cheer him up. Brian gets pulled over for drunk driving on their way back to the crib and catches a DUI. In court, they sentence him to look after this old woman, Pearl Burton. She's really loud, really rude, really stubborn. She doesn't make it easy for this nigga at all. I heard you drop that light bulb too. That'll be 67 cents. Now go warm me up some of that diarrhea soup. Brian spazzes on her, but he later learns that she's a beautiful opera singer, sharing a lot of his interests. And she hasn't left the crib in like 30 years because all people know her for is her commercial jingles, not her true art. Psh, that's finna be me if y'all keep commenting that goddamn Chris Brown stump they are bullshit. Son, come on, I, I ain't even, I ain't even make the joke. God damn, fucking hate y'all niggas, son. Damn it. Look at that Grizzly Adams, huh? Look, look at how confident he is, how majestic. Lois, I'm gonna grow a beard. At the same time, Peter grows a beard and a rare bird flies into it. The endangered white rumped swallow. <laughs> Rump. This isn't funny, Chris. <laughs> swallow. Yeah. <laughs> white. The bird eventually lays eggs in Peter's beard and dips off, so Peter ends up raising the birds. I was trying to figure out for a while what the difference was and how this episode is put together compared to the later ones, but then I realized something wild. So you know the first acts, right? Like in Family Guy episodes and how they normally have nothing to do with the rest of the story. Yeah, so after watching so many of these, I realized that this wasn't even a trademark Family Guy thing until later on in the series run. The episode opens with Brian on a date. It tells us what he's looking for in a partner. The conversation he's trying to start is about opera music, which is what he bonds with Pearl over. There's a set piece with the science fair and the laser light show and stuff, but it's all centered around Brian and how he feels. I remember really loving this aspect of Dog Bites Bear. It did that too. It's a real throwback to how the show used to pace itself. You gotta think, this is a completely different era for Family Guy, son. Like Peter's stupidity, is more innocence than unlawful, reckless ass behavior. Stewie's still like a baby. He gets tricked into being drunk. He goes on long rants about being potty trained. You get a job! And this was back when he was mad all of the damn time. One of the changes that I'm glad they went with. These jokes are definitely funny, but you can tell by the time that they came back for season four, they were already fed up with writing them like this. And if you need an idea of how drastic Peter as a character changed, I saw this really early episode a few months ago. The difference is beyond night and day. Listen, Brian, I take a bullet for Meg, so I'm sure I can take it. Hi, Dad. The characterization stuff is pretty interesting. Watching all these episodes put a lot of that stuff in perspective for me. I could spend this whole video yelling about how much Brian changed because I honestly feel like I know way too much about Brian Griffin at this point, but I'll save that for whenever I do this video. I have a disgusting amount of family god knowledge now, and I will be subjecting all of you to it. Wow. Oh, you sure know a lot of stuff. It's great to learn, because knowledge is power. So when I was a kid, that was back when the whole family guy stole from the Simpsons thing was still crazy hot in the streets. Shit like this Mad Magazine cover, which I always kind of felt was a little OD. Like, Chris is nothing like Bart, but I don't know, son, so much propaganda. A nigga was Team Simpsons for real. We act like we didn't take a lot from The Simpsons, but we took a lot from The Simpsons. This episode actually has one of those clips from one of those compilation videos. Don't! Uh, don't! Ooh. Don't! This time. Don't! Damn it all! Oh my god, they stole! Family Guy stole! I'm still gonna watch this shit though.
you're going to hate your life in 10 years. If we're gonna get to what actually makes this episode so phenomenal, it all starts when Brian warms up the Pearl. I was thinking about making us that lamb and rice you love. Well, you know, Pearl, what I'd really like for dinner is, uh, to go out. It's here where Brian sings to Pearl about everything that she's missed since she's been in the house. And I go back and forth on this a lot, but I'm pretty sure that this is the best song in one of these primetime adult cartoons. Like, that's such a specific stat, but I swear to God, this record is amazing. It actually got this show an Emmy in 2002, so yeah, nah, this joke is fucking stupid. Hey, that's no fair. I don't got none of them. I wish I could play the whole song. Like, it's, it's so good. But, like, copyright and shit. I gotta get paid, son. Cash rules everything around us. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. The 60s brought the hippie breed. And decades later, things have changed indeed. We lost the values, but we kept the weed. You've got a lot to see. But you can forgive the world and its flaws. And follow me there, because you've got a lot to see. Brian, I've missed so much. I wouldn't be standing here right now if it wasn't for you. In the hospital, Pearl reveals that she doesn't have much longer. Brian feels really bad, but she assures him that this was the best day of her life. At the same time, Peter, who's grown really attached to the baby birds, has to say goodbye to them. I only wish we could have a little more time together. We can. Just when you think this episode couldn't get any sweeter and well put together, Brian pulls out the fucking virtual reality shit from the first act and uses it to spend the rest of his time with Pearl. Fuck! Holy shit! This is such a good... This scene is so beautiful for so many reasons. Like first, the music. Seth always wanted to make sure Family Guy sounded like a film, and it never truly got any more amazing than this. The fact that they actually went there with this emotion, it blows my mind. The stuff with Peter and the birds is really wholesome and sweet, so it fits right in here. And we gotta stop and talk about the visuals real fast. Look at some of these shots, like really. Even other ones throughout the episode. Family Guy used to be a beautiful ass cartoon, son. It still looks good today in its own right. I used to be one of those goofies that complained about the recycled poses and dead expressions, but that's not all the show is. It's kind of a generalization, son. See, right, I got this book. And it shows all of the backgrounds, the storyboards, color choices. A lot of shit goes into this, son, don't sleep. And plus, working in primetime, the network has certain restrictions on the artists for how far they can go. It's, it's a lot going on. Just don't call him lazy though. Most of you niggas can't even draw. Look at Brian's face while Stewie's drunk. It's so funny. Yeah, I seen that video of mocking Family Guy's animation ending with a picture of Walt Disney. One day, I'ma actually tell y'all about how Walt Disney ruined animation, but I ain't doing that no time soon. I got too much shit to do. Goodbye, Pearl. There's honestly only one thing about this episode that I don't love, and honestly, it just kind of depends on which day you catch me on. Sometimes I'll chuckle, sometimes I'll roll my eyes. When Pearl dies and Brian says goodbye, Dr. Hartman runs over and says, Hey, who wants to see a dead body? It's objectively a funny joke, I think. The silly reality of a doctor actually saying something like this. I just hate that it's after such a beautiful moment. They could have held that punch. But even then, it doesn't take away from how beautiful this entire episode ends up being. There's a whole story about how the staff writers had to convince Seth to keep the heartwarming ending. He just wanted to do a bunch of gags like with the other episodes. They talk about it on the audio commentary. Shout out to Twitter user Graham Edgler, I hope I said that right, for hooking me up. I, as I recall, Dan uh, yes, Palazzino and, and, and yes. I had a discussion with you about um, infusing this, this episode of Family Guy with human emotion. This, <laughs> right. I'll admit, I was, I was afraid at the beginning. It's okay, Seth, walk with us. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that's literally all they say. 
I swear this commentary is like one of the most uninteresting things I've ever heard. Hey, Brian, looks like somebody's checking you out. I'm, I'm not ready yet. Hey, you're getting some looks yourself. Uh, I, I'm not ready either. talk about it a little in the baby blues video but the past three or four months really have been some of if not the worst of my entire life there came a point where i couldn't watch anything without bursting into tears it didn't matter what it was like i legitimately remember audibly crying during an episode of it's pony nothing about that damn cartoon is sad through this point of my mindset the only thing that i was able to watch for some reason was older episodes of family guy then when i ran out i moved on to the later seasons and eventually finished the show yes son finished i've seen every episode of family guy by accident and i enjoyed every second of it i fucking love family guy now son and i think it's crazy that i went from complaining about family guy in every video as a teenager to the show basically saving my life in adulthood and for a while, I was fascinated by what could have possibly ignited this change in how I view this show. Okay, so here's where I landed on this. I think Family Guy is a show that exists in its own universe. And not in like a in-show universe kind of sense. Like you ever hear about how out of touch Lil Wayne is and a bunch of other rappers' response to that is to say that he's just in his own world disconnected from everyone else? That's what Family Guy is to the rest of television. It's even like that with the other Seth MacFarlane shows. If you actually pay attention, American Dad, Family Guy, and Cleveland Show are three totally different shows tonally, following three different art design and storytelling philosophies. An American Dad joke would not fit on the Cleveland Show and vice versa. I think through my rewatch, I started to realize how interesting of a study Family Guy is in animation and why I feel like we've been too hard on it. Everything I've ever said is true. There's extremely problematic episodes with disgusting political implications, victim blaming, moral ambiguities, everything. I completely stand by everything I said a few years ago. Those episodes are terrible and are damn near damaging to society. I still hate screams of silence like any other rational human being. But those episodes aside, you still have the characters that do terrible things to each other and follow by a zoom in with an apology as everyone smiles and hugs and that's the end. In any other show, this literally wouldn't make any sense. But that's what I meant when I say Family Guy exists in its own universe. The way the writers tackle this show is really freeform. A character can say a line to another and never bring it up again and still have a happy ending. Lois and Peter can throw shots at each other and still hug it out at the end. I wouldn't say this is revolutionary, but it's fascinating to watch. I think Family Guy tells us exactly what it is at the start of every season or episode, and we get conflicted because A, it doesn't follow normal storytelling conventions, stuff that normally creates the best entertainment out, sort of like the reason why Matt and Trey hate the show, or B, is not what it used to be. And, I don't know, watching this show back to back really taught me what kind of show this really is. Family Guy's function, right, isn't to tell a story, at least not anymore. The story is like the backdrop. These characters are around to put on a show, to kind of do whatever and throw whatever at the wall and see what sticks. Think of like the Disney gang or the Mario Brothers or the Looney Tunes. And it's definitely not for everybody, but at the right time? I don't know, it hits different. Sometimes we need entertainment like this. I think Brian Wallows and Peter Swallows is the best episode of Family Guy because it did the impossible. It's one of the only episodes of Family Guy to step out of its own universe and tell a normal story. And the most unironically amazing thing about it is that it succeeds. Nothing about this feels empty or try hard. Much like Dog Bites Bear, it feels earned. Family Guy can have the heart of The Simpsons or the wit of Futurama, but it chooses not to because it remembers what it is and the type of show that they want to make. But the fact that they don't go for it often makes episodes like this a true delicacy. Brian Wallows and Peter Swallows 
is the best episode of Family Guy because it's not an episode of Family Guy. And to be able to pull that off, that's art. Uh, Pearl Burton? Uh, my, my, my name's Brian. I'm here from the, uh, Outreach to the Elderly program. Why don't you do the world a big favor and drop dead? Uh, this, this last one won't open. Oh, you gotta, gotta jiggle it a little. Uh, like this? Ah, yeah, let me get it. Oh, thanks. And, uh, and, you know, drop dead. Oh, every good mother knows when it's time for her babies to leave the nest. Well, you know, Pearl, what I'd really like for dinner is... To go out. You know I can't do that. I haven't left this house in such a long time. I'm afraid. I know, but I'll be with you. Don't be so hard on yourself. Aside from the truck part, this was the best day of my life. I only wish we could have a little more time together. Goodbye, Pearl. Hey, who wants to see a dead body? Yeah, I don't know. I guess you caught me on the right day. Hey, do you think do you think Plankton sleeps with one eye open because these niggas creeping? <laughs> <laughs>